Hi everyone. I'm really looking forward to reading you another chapter of Star. Here's the beautiful front cover by Britta Teckendrup and I'm going to try and show you the illustrations by Joanne Davies as well. So this is chapter five. Can you see the opening illustration, Nick? So Anna's heading off into the forest looking for the tiger cub. Anushka looked around, confused. How had the tiger disappeared so fast? Where are you? she groaned, stumbling through the trees, hoping to see a flash of orange fur or the gleam of golden eyes. But there wasn't even a glimpse of a tiger, just a lot of scuffly marks in the snow. I was supposed to find you and bring you back with me, or at least tell Papa and Dimitri where you are so they could call the nature reserve. She sighed. I suppose you're still not that far from the village. That's good news. The village. Anushka looked down at her hands, holding the torch. Only the torch. No string. What had she done with it? She shone the torch around the snowy forest floor, crouching and sifting anxiously through the piled snow. It must have fallen out of her hand when she tripped, she realised. And that had been... where exactly? She'd forgotten and wandered on. Her clever plan with the string was completely useless now. She couldn't see the lights of the village, and she had nothing to follow back home. Anushka stood in the middle of a tiny, snowy clearing in the forest and turned slowly in a circle. She had no idea which way to go, as the prints in the snow were all mixed up together. The only thing she could do was go on searching. The tiger cub had been just steps away. Anushka must be able to find her. Strangely, she wasn't scared. There was something odd and dreamlike about this journey out through the night in the forest. It felt like a fairy tale, and in those stories, the child who was looking for something always found it in the end, even if there were twists and turns along the way. Anushka had set out wanting to save the little tiger, but so far it had been the tiger who had saved her. I'll go... This way, Anushka muttered. The torch beam had landed on a tiny path, threading off between tall fir trees. It looked like it had been made by deer and the other animals of the forest. She walked on, her footsteps crunching in the snow, turning the torch from side to side, searching for the tiger. The snow had drifted more thickly here, and her boots were starting to leave deep prints. She could see the trail of them stretching out behind her. But just in front of her was another print, a perfect round tiger paw print, and another and another leading on ahead. Yes, Anushka whispered delightedly, hurrying on after the tracks. She was sure that if she could find the tiger again, everything would be all right. Somehow, together, they would find their way home. She clapped her hands together to keep them warm, she was glad of the layers and layers of clothes she'd put on. The nights seemed to be growing colder and it was definitely slowing her down. Each step seemed more of an effort than the last. It was so hard to keep walking when the view never seemed to change. Trees all around her, trees ahead of her, a world of black branches and white snow. The path began to open out, the tiger's tracks taking her into another clearing. A great tree had fallen. Anushka could still see part of its trunk under the snow, and next to it was a tumble-down little hut. It had probably been built from the wood of the fallen tree, she realised. It must be somewhere for hunters to sleep when they were spending the night out in the forest on a deer hunt. She clapped her hands together again. Seeing the hut made her realise just how cold she was. Perhaps she could go in and sit down for a bit. It would surely be warmer inside than it was out here. It was then she saw that there was smoke coming out of the chimney. And yes, there was a light showing round the cracks of the door. Someone was inside. Anushka almost ran to bang on the door, to wake them up and ask for help finding her way back to the village. She even hurried a few steps forward. But then she realised that if she woke the hunters they would take her straight home. The hunters would be horrified that she was out here all on her own. They wouldn't want to listen to why. And then the tiger cub would be alone and hungry again, 
and it would all have been for nothing. Tucking her gloved hands under her arms for extra warmth, Anushka turned away from the little hut and trudged on through the snow, following the tiger tracks. But she kept looking back at the safety and warmth she could have had, if only she'd knocked on the door. It was getting harder to walk on now. Her steps were even slower, and her head was thick and muzzy with cold. It was so tempting to sit down in the snow and rest. No, Anushka growled at herself. It was the cold making her think like that. It was deceptive. If she sat down in the snow, she wouldn't get up again. But still, the deep drifts were starting to look almost cosy. Perhaps she should eat the food she brought with her. Anushka stopped walking, blinking down at her coat. She had taken the piroshki that Papa had left in the fridge for his lunch the next day. He'd left them nicely wrapped up, and they fitted perfectly in her deep coat pockets. She'd planned to be back in time to explain where they'd gone. She wasn't actually feeling hungry, but perhaps the food would give her some more energy to fight the cold. She patted vaguely at her coat, trying to find the foil packet, but her fingers seemed to be all thumbs. It was just too much effort to take off her two pairs of gloves, unbutton the pocket and open up the wrapping. She was too tired. Instead, she clenched her fingers around the little wooden tiger tucked inside her glove and stomped on, one foot after the other. She would not stop. She was going to find the tiger cub. She knew it deep down inside her. It was so terribly important, and it was all to do with the little wooden tiger from Baba's mantelpiece. Anushka blinked, her frosted eyelashes heavy, and then she shook her head. The wooden tiger was hers, carved by her papa. It had never belonged to either of her grandmothers. The cold really was making her dreamy. She stopped for a moment to catch her breath, and the torchlight flashed on something shining ahead. Anushka peered forward, the strange weariness easing a little. What could it be? It looked like the glint of metal, but she couldn't think why there would be metal in the middle of the forest. She struggled towards it, realising that the trees were thinning. It was a road, then. Ah, oh, no, the railway line. Anushka had come further than she expected. The line ran past the village, carrying passengers and goods to Vladivostok. She'd travelled on it with her parents to visit relatives in the city. If she stayed close to the railway line, she would come to somewhere with people. It might be a long walk, but she wasn't lost any more. Anushka took a deep, shuddering breath, at last admitting to herself how frightened she'd been. She stood looking at the track, wondering how far she could safely explore on either side without losing her way again. Would the tiger cub be frightened of the railway line, she wondered? Or perhaps it was a helpful landmark for tigers too. Even if she went out of sight of the tracks, she would still be able to hear the trains, she realised. She could follow the sound back. Anushka stamped her feet up and down firmly, trying to ease her numbed toes. The track was so much more than just a set of rails and sleepers. It was a path and a sign. She felt awake now and almost hopeful. Anushka picked her way through the piled-up snow on either side of the track and shone her torch along the metal rails. She was fairly sure she knew which way led back in the direction of her village. The line went past the village about a mile to the east, but she knew she could have lost her sense of direction in the forest. Once she'd found the tiger cub, they'd hurry back that way. She rubbed her fingers over the little wooden tiger again and bit her cold-numbed lip. She still wasn't quite sure how she was going to get the tiger cub to follow her to safety. She kept remembering that moment when they'd stared into each other's eyes and hoping. Anushka stamped her feet again. She had pins and needles. That was a good sign, she decided. Perhaps it was getting warmer and the feeling was coming back to her feet. They were definitely buzzing. Although it wasn't quite the same prickly feeling she'd had before more of a low hum. Anushka wriggled her toes and then she realised that it wasn't just her feet that were humming. All of her was. A train. She was standing right next to the railway line and there was a train coming. The strange humming was the vibration of the wheels speeding along the rails towards her. She glanced up and down the line and far in the distance she saw the pinprick lights of the approaching train. She was just turning to hurry back to the safety of the trees when her torchlight caught a dark shape 
huddled on the track. Anushka pointed the torch at it, hoping that it wasn't a fallen branch that might damage the train. The torchlight shone back at her, reflected in the tiger's golden eyes. And we'll carry on with chapter six next time. Bye, everyone.